<clears throat> good afternoon, blog viewers. Uh, today we're going to talk about justice, and we're developing a good flow finally with these video posts this summer, and I, I hope to uh, come up with some good ideas in August and uh, have a productive month on the blog. Um, this post uh, is entitled, Not My Brother's Keeper, and it's in response to an argument that you hear that's been repeated uh, for decades, if not centuries, um, by humanitarians and often liberals. And uh, it's also an argument that seems to just, one of these things that just pervades the atmosphere, the mental atmosphere and um, of our lives. And basically, in its broadest formulation, the argument goes like this. Uh, there you sit, in your comfortable, secure, um, perhaps um, luxurious uh, suburban home somewhere. And there you sit, either watching cable, uh, goofing off on the internet, um, going to bars and clubs, playing golf or cycling or tennis, um, watching movies all day. And you're doing all this while others, uh, or other human beings, are dying or starving or being exploited all over the world, uh, whether in Africa, Asia, or other countries, South America. And you're a bad person for doing this. Uh, that, just re summarizing this argument. You're a bad person for doing this. Uh, you're a selfish, uh, hedonist, egoist. And you should, uh, you should do something to help the suffering of other human beings. Uh, rather than doing these trivial activities like playing golf and cycling and going to bars and getting drunk. <clears throat> you should do something to help the suffering of their other human beings. If you don't, well, then you are a uh, uncaring, low-down, no-good person. And you are responsible or at fault for the suffering of these other persons by your inaction, by the fact that you choose to live this kind of life where you don't do anything to help these other people. Now, this argument is deeply, deeply flawed, and it's close to, it's bordering on idiotic. Um, and uh, I wanted to describe, uh, I want to spend the rest of this post discussing why. Um, now, as a metaphor, I want to, dis I want to pu uh, present a metaphor which will start to present some of the problems with this argument. Let's say you were going to uh, go to the grocery store this morning at 10 a.m. to get some eggs and milk. But for whatever reason, uh, you woke up, you were too lazy to do it, and you wanted to go back to sleep. Uh, and it, so at 10 a.m. comes and you don't go. Um, and this day at 10 a.m. Uh, there was a, uh, at the grocery store, a car uh, ran over a pedestrian, killed the pedestrian at the corner of the grocery store. Now, had you gone, had you, had you gone as you, as you planned to do, uh, you would have been there in front of this car and it would have hit your bumper, kind of smashed your bumper. No big deal though, nobody would have been hurt. You would have gotten your bumper changed, but the person would not have been killed. Um, so in this scenario, would anyone, would any sane person hold you at fault for the death of the pedestrian for just going back to sleep and not going to the grocery store? Would anyone find any fault, moral fault or otherwise, with your action? No, they wouldn't. And why is that? Because you had no duty to go to the store. You had no duty and you didn't directly cause, even though in some way, in some loose sense, in, some, in the sense that everything in the world is sort of caused by everything else and is related to everything else in a very loose way, in a sort of random way, uh, you may have caused it. Uh, but in a direct sense, you, never, you didn't directly cause it. You weren't morally at fault. You weren't uh, none of your actions directly caused um, this, this event. The direct cause of the event was the, um, importantly, the direct cause, the only direct cause of the event, assuming the pedestrian was doing nothing wrong, was the, um, was the car driver who was not uh, paying attention. That was the direct cause, and there was probably no other direct cause in that situation. Now, from this example, from this metaphor, what principle do we get? <clears throat> A very simple one. Being a just person requires you to be responsible for and attempt to mitigate the consequences within reality of all your actions that are uh, that you directly cause. Things that you directly cause, you are 
uh, within reality you are responsible for trying to either mitigate or make good in some form or another. You're, you're liable for it. Now, if you uh, didn't directly cause some situation in reality, no matter how tragic or cruel or gruesome that situation may be, you aren't, you are not, let me repeat this and emphasize it, you are not an unjust person for not having the desire to take even one step to correct it. Now, of course, as soon as I say that and emphasize that side of the issue, I also want to emphasize you also aren't a good person for not having this desire. Uh, but that's a separate issue. You're not going to win a Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize, for being this kind of person. Um, and you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't take much pride um, or celebrate the fact that your desires are such that you'd rather spend all your time playing golf rather than do anything to, to help people that are starving and dying. You probably shouldn't celebrate that. You probably shouldn't be proud of that. But still, I, would, I want to argue it doesn't make you an unjust person because you did not directly cause those events. So, if you live in a rich, affluent country, a first world country, whatever the PC term is now, I don't even know. Economically developed, whatever. I, I don't keep up. I do not keep up with PC terms, so I don't know them. And I don't, um, this is not my... I'm not being, uh, I'm not a bad person if I use these terms. I'll apologize right now uh, that are that are not, now not PC. It's just I don't keep up with PC, so I don't know the terms. But I, so I'm going to use first world and third world. So if you live in a first world country living a standard middle class life, what do I mean by that? Standard middle class life, you go to work, okay? You sit there in an office somewhere and you're bored and you go on Facebook and you take a long lunch and you text all day and you go on Amazon and you try to buy some stuff that you need for the house. And then you sit and co commute for an hour. And then you get home, you're exhausted, and you eat and drink. And after that, you watch some TV and you go to sleep. That is the standard middle class life. Now if you live that life, you're not responsible for the genocides, the rapes, the starvations, um, the labor violations, um, any other the natural disasters, the poor medical care that may, uh, that may harm people in other continents, third world continents. And conversely, no one, no, one ever, no one ever flips this. I don't know why, but it's interesting to note that no one ever flips this scenario. So conversely, if you live in a third world country, you're not responsible for what I would call a lot of the psychological maladies uh, affecting people in the first world, such as depression such as status anxiety, such as drug abuse, recreational drug abuse, such as loss of face-to-face -face human interaction, such as lying, such as money worship, such as obesity. There's just a whole host of medical issues related to obesity. When the third world countries have the problem of starvation and all those issues, first world countries have the problem of obesity, which causes a whole heck of a lot of other medical issues. But how come no one ever flips this? No one ever flips this argument and blames third world inhabitants for not caring um, about the first world maladies that we just that are real, that are that are deadly in their own way, perhaps not as clearly deadly, but still deadly. Um, how come no one ever flips this? I don't know. Um, I'm, all I know is I've never heard the flip side of this, other than what I just said. So, so ask yourself this now. As a related consideration, as a matter of reality, what can you actually do as a single person to handle these huge, to address or resolve or make better these huge systemic issues in these other continents? How are you going to end hatred from your middle class suburb existence? How are you going to end the hatred between Jews and Muslims in the Middle East that's been going on for centuries? How are you going to end starvation in Africa? If you have a job and a family here, how can you do anything but go to these places, empathize for a few weeks, take some pictures that you'll post on Facebook, maybe contribute a couple hundred bucks, and then come back home and leave the problem there largely unresolved? Uh, largely unresolved. What else can you do? So as a practical matter, you really can't do much anyway. So where is the justice in all of this? Is this just such an such a unjust world we live in that these problems are there and we can, I would argue that it's not unjust for uh, people here not to do things to fix problems there. So where is the justice in the world? 
The justice is that the persons in those countries that directly cause these bad conditions uh, must tirelessly work to remedy uh, the consequences of their behavior and uh, or or end the or or end the bad condition. They have to tirelessly work. Because they have to do basically uh, from the standpoint of justice, I would argue they should do nothing but uh, work to alleviate uh, the consequences of their behavior because they caused it. So they shouldn't do anything but maybe eat, sleep, and work to, to eliminate these problems. And I, if you, they did that, I think a lot of these problems would just go away anyway. Now, it's unjust for them, not you, to neglect these problems that they directly caused. And again, to be clear, uh, living in, in the first world, you're, you, you aren't directly causing third world problems. Uh, one argument that is often made in Western uh, is that Western consumption patterns, iPhones, LCD TVs, uh, furniture, um, all sorts of things like that, um, clothes, rely upon production uh, in third world countries where the labor is very poorly paid, sweatshops, laws are violated. And so Western consum as a Western consumer, the argument is made that you are somehow complicit or causing these bad conditions. This is wrong. As a consumer, I would argue, when I go to Walmart or when I go to some other store, I am totally justified in assuming that the products that I'm buying there were produced legally and fairly under all U.S. and international laws that are applicable. I have no reason to assume to the contrary. No reason. Uh, I can buy those products and, and rest with a clear conscience that I'm not causing any suffering anywhere. Unless I'm presented with evidence to the contrary. Evidence, that's the key point. Not speculation, not rumor, not distorted, present, distorted documentaries. Evidence. And evidence that present-day items are purchased uh, was, as a product of illegality. Often you have some story about something that happened in some plant somewhere three years ago. And Walmart may have been a distributor of that thing, or whatever. But it's it, there's no evidence that it's continuing, and it's and it's affecting what you purchased. So I think, as a Western consumer, you're almost always justified in assuming that what you have been purchasing has not been um, the result of this kind of conduct. And because of that, I would argue there's no injustice in your doing that. So these are this was my attempt to sort of. Uh, make a huge dent in, in a very often repeated argument for why the world is unjust and especially certain people are unjust with regard to failures to act and alleviate suffering in other parts of the world. And I think I've, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, shed some clarity on the issue, but I do want to stress that this issue, I was not arguing in this post that this inaction or this indifference is necessarily a good thing. It's just that it doesn't make you unjust. And I will try to separate that and discuss that more in detail in further posts. Bye.